What do you think sets you apart from a lot of the different guards in the ACC? I feel like my speed, definitely. Um, my change of pace, um, just getting to the basket the way I can lead throughout defenses. Um, I feel like sometimes that has a lot of teams stuck and they don't know what to do. And just my relentlessness, I just keep going. I don't stop. So um, yeah, I feel like that's what really just shocks a lot of uh, teams. That relentless aspect to you, you're going to keep going. It does not phase you. You are still going. And as an opponent, like that is so frustrating because you're like, oh, I'm in their head. But you're really mm -hmm. not. Like you just going to yeah. keep it pushing. Yeah. <laughs> Next play. <laughs> Presented by Wendy's. Welcome back to Sometimes I Hoop. We've got a highly requested guest just in time for March Madness joining us today. Quick humble brag, 2023 National Freshman of the Year, two-time first team all ACC, one of the fastest in program history to ever cross a thousand career points, none other than Florida State's own Tanaya Latson. Thank you so much for hopping on the pod today. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. So jumping right into the women's basketball landscape, things are heating up in the conference tournament, as we've seen over these past few days. Things have been a little crazy, but we'll start with you guys in the ACC tournament. Big win against Syracuse, tough loss against NC State. What do you like about how your team is gelling headed into March Madness right now? We understand that um, it's bigger than us and we want to, you know, change the program. We want to turn it around. Um, I feel like we all have the same common goal, which is to win. Mm -hmm. um, that's very important. Um, and we're just gelling. We, we have chemistry on and off the court. Um, and like I said, we just have each other's backs. So I feel like that's what's helping us go into the tournament. Yeah, I feel like it's very apparent when you guys play that you have great team chemistry. You've kind of had that young core really since you guys came in. So I think it's really kind of showing as you get into this part of the season. But, I mean, the ACC final was exciting. Notre Dame beat NC State. It was a really close game. Did you have Notre Dame winning or did you pick NC State? What, what was your kind of prediction heading into that? I knew Notre Dame was going to win. Okay. Um, but I have a lot of friends that play for NC State, so I was kind of just neutral. I love Coach Ivy. She's such an amazing coach. Um, and uh, Coach Westmore, he's such a great coach, too. So I knew it was going to be a battle, but I knew Notre Dame was going to win it. Okay, yeah. I got. I saw Notre Dame play against Georgia Tech. I mean, they're tough to beat. I feel like they have oh, a lot yeah. of different weapons, but you guys do, too. You lead the ACC top of the conference in scoring at 80 points a game. That I mean, mm -hmm. that's hefty. How are you supposed to, like, mm -hmm. it's really just trying to outscore y'all at the end of the day. So mm -hmm. what makes you guys so dangerous on the offensive end? I feel like we play pretty fast. I mean, we're the fastest in the conference. Um, that's our motto, just be the fastest team in the country. Um, get to the basket. Uh, you know, just everybody's an attacker. Everybody can go to the basket. And I feel like that really helps us um, score as much as we do. I mean, and you individually averaging 21 a game, that's insane for you to be doing for still, I feel like you're still so young in my eyes, but you've been running <laughs> FSU for a few years now. So, I mean, you're averaging 21 a game, fourth in the ACC, 13th in the country. How do you feel like you've continued to elevate your game? Because even as a freshman, you were one of the top scorers in the league. And so now you're at the head of every scouting report. So how have you continued to still work through all the different defensive schemes being thrown at you? If they're going over, they're trapping, all these different things. How have you been able to continue to elevate your game? Just trying to like uh, be consistent with my outside shot. I've been working on that in the offseason, just trying to you know open up the lane for me. Um, to be a threat all over the floor, um, just getting my teammates more involved. Uh, when I am getting trapped, just try to pass to somebody that's open. Um, just make the right plays for my teammates and uh, myself, and just continue to be me. Um, I don't. I just take what the defense is giving me, mm -hmm. um, but also just still trying to be aggressive, still trying to have that hunger. I feel like that was the biggest thing this year for me. Just continue to be hungry. Talking about other conference tournaments, the SEC was absolutely insane. Watching yeah. this past weekend, it was all over the place. So we'll start off with the semis. Tennessee had South Carolina, which I did not see coming, honestly. I know Tennessee is good, but I thought yeah. South Carolina was going to run that game. Camilla yeah. hitting the three. Like, your first career Crazy. attempt is insane. So we'll start with Tennessee. Do you feel like they're going to kind of like be an under-the-radar team? I feel like their coach always has them prepped. So... Coming into the tournament, I feel like, you know, you guys beat them earlier in the year, which was mm -hmm. close. What, you guys won by yeah. one? 
So yeah, like we won by one point. <laughs> one by one. That was a close game too. And so, you know, I feel like they're kind of under the radar. But coming off a loss like that, do you feel like that'll really help them motivate moving into the postseason? Yeah, I mean, I feel like nobody's come that close to beating South Carolina. And I feel like that should give them an extra boost, like that they are, they are capable of beating the best. Um, yeah. That shouldn't be like a a dagger for them. I feel like that should give them um, confidence um, to show like what they're capable of. And they have awesome, awesome players like Jewel Spear, um, Rakia Jackson. Um, and they just, they just gel. I feel like they really fit each other. Um, so I feel like they, they're going to make a pretty good run in the tournament. Yeah. I feel like a lot of teams have the capability to really put together a tough run in the tournament, but oh, yeah. another team like that is LSU. And that game yesterday mm-hmm. was I just, I don't have the words. Like, it was literally <laughs> everywhere. And I, everybody knew that rematch was going to be insane. LSU South Carolina has really become a rivalry in recent years, I feel like. And mm-hmm. SC seems invincible a lot of the time. But they've had a few close games like that. Talking about Tennessee, I think they had another scare earlier in SEC play. But, yeah. like, the end of that game shows the intensity of women's basketball right now. And I feel like it's literally mm-hmm. all over my social media feed. No matter where I am, what's TikTok, Twitter, it's all I'm seeing. So yeah. I want your opinion. Do you feel like the benches should have been ejected? Like, what, what, what are you, and especially like, them not being able to come out and celebrate at the end was wild. Yeah, I that saw, was crazy. I saw Chloe posting the selfie yeah, of the four in the locker room. <laughs> I was dying. But what's your opinion on how the end of the game and how that was all handled? Yeah, that was crazy. I mean, I can see the ejections, but like you said, just allowing them to come out and celebrate, that was like, that was, I feel like that should have been able, they should have been able to do that. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, I knew it was going to come to that because it was a pretty physical game and, you know, the rest were letting them play and talk smack. So, yeah. I mean, that's what happens, like Coach Don Staley said. Um, that's what happens when tempers flare and everybody's trying to win. Um, but it was really great for TV. It's it's good for girls basketball too. I feel like mm-hmm. it brings a lot of exposure for us. Um, and yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm always going to go for South Carolina because my my teammate Raven Johnson, mm-hmm. uh, my high school teammate, I love her. Um, I was so happy that they won. Um, I like LSU too. I got a couple friends over there too. So it was a good game though. It was really good. I was watching the battle in the post like. It was getting chippy. I was like, oh, we're not calling anything today. But hey, bad girls play. <laughs> literally, literally. But touching on another conference, we got the Big Ten. Seeing Ohio State and Indiana lose, I was yeah, shocked. That was crazy. That was crazy. insane because Ohio State was on a 14-game win streak heading into that. So to mm-hmm. drop back-to-back, and I don't know how that's going to affect their number one seed lining like that, I feel mm-hmm. like it's just showing – the depth of every conference. Because I feel like in years right. past, it's kind of been like SEC, Pac-12, and ACC, you're deep mm-hmm. from top to yeah. bottom. Big 10 and mm-hmm. Big 12 are always kind of run by those same top teams. But mm-hmm. seeing somebody like a Nebraska get into the championship game is really exciting. And so yeah. that overtime final, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel like that secures Iowa a number one seed heading into the tournament? Or do you feel like things can still kind of be shaken up coming into Selection Sunday? I feel like that secures them, honestly. Um, mm-hmm. They've had a they had a pretty good year, even though they had a couple upsets. I feel like um, just the power of Caitlin Clark, like yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. I feel like they're gonna get that number one seed for sure. And finally, with the pack, Stanford did lose yesterday, which hurt my heart. But I mean, <laughs> U- U- USC is tough. USC is tough. Yeah. You gotta give to them. And I feel like you know Juju's amazing, but I feel like mm-hmm. people are so caught up being like she's the whole team when in reality she's a great supporting cast somebody like Mackenzie Mm -hmm. Forbes who I played club Mm -hmm. with who I love seeing her go crazy yesterday yeah yeah I played um USA basketball with her and she's such a great teammate like she does all the little things so she does I love seeing just like other players step up and I think what makes Juju great just like yourself is that when she sees like maybe she doesn't have the hot hand you know she's still swinging the ball she's getting her teammates involved there's all these other things going on Talking about Juju a little bit, we talked about Notre Dame. Coming from you being a Rookie of the Year yourself, who has your vote for this season's Freshman of the Year, Hannah or Juju? Are you on one side? Are you going to take the middle? Give us some good. Um, well, I've been knowing Juju since I was in, like, seventh grade. She was, like, sixth grade, so it's some yeah. history there. And, you know, Hannah Hidalgo, i got to give her a prop. She's an amazing player. Yeah. So I'm just going to stay neutral, but... 
Um, at the same time, I got to go with, like, my friend. Um, Juju's been playing her butt off. Like, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Um, a lot of people haven't seen that. And I feel like she gives college basketball just, a, uh, like, a refreshing. Like, she's so refreshing. She's such a great person. Um, she's an amazing player, like I said. So I feel like they're going to give it to her. Yeah. But thinking about the tournament, I want to get into the madness a little bit. And some of our next questions are brought to us by our lovely sponsor, Wendy's. So I want to ask you a question about, we talked a little about like kind of those dark horse teams, people who are kind of coming into it towards the end of the season. What teams have made you do a double take and like who could kind of make a run this year? Because there's always those teams. A few years ago, it was Creighton. I don't know. I think another year it was like Miami BYU was may run. Last year. Yeah, Miami yeah. was a team last year. So who do you feel like is going to be that team this year? Mm, Michigan. Michigan has been playing pretty good too lately. Though. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Um, Michigan, um, of course, Tennessee, like I just said, I feel like they're going to make a pretty good run. Yeah. Um, I mean, Notre Dame, like they just won ACC, but I yeah. feel like people are still kind of like underestimating them. I feel like they're going to make a pretty good run too, especially mm-hmm. if they're healthy. Um Virginia Tech, I mean, they just lost Liz Kitley, so I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, those are a few teams. But talking about teams, I want to move into specific players. Is there anybody that has, like, really impressed you this season that's going to make some noise in the tournament? Of course, Juju. Of course, mm-hmm. um, Hannah Hidalgo. Um, Rikia Jackson. Uh, who else? Georgia Amore. Mm. Like, I know she's without Liz right now, and that's, like, her partner in crime, but she's an amazing player. Yeah. Amazing player. Alyssa Peewee, I feel like she's pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's all I got on the top of my head right well, now. Well, those are some good picks. I love watching Georgia play. Her step back yeah. three is actually, like, unguardable. Like, what are you supposed to do with that? That crossover is unguardable. <laughs> like, <laughs> my freshman year, that was, like, my walk in the college moment. Dang. I almost got, I almost fell. I was like, <laughs> You, you know, what? it's okay. It's happened to many people out there. It's fine. I had my welcome to the league moment with a freaking jab step. So like, you're <laughs> good. A crossover step back, you're fine. But I think headed into the tournament, one thing that I've always found so interesting is like you play at these neutral sites, right? With the regionals, you have Seattle, Greensboro, whatever it may be. But the way that the certain fans show up for certain teams, it does not feel neutral. Like seeing South Carolina travel to Gr- Greensboro, which honestly isn't even that far from Columbia, but mm-hmm. like playing somebody like that, I feel like there are certain fan bases that are just absolutely insane. What do you feel like one of the wildest fan bases, I mean, recently in college hoops? NC State, when we played them, they had the whole crowd. It was just go past really? the whole crowd. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that one. Yeah, they have a pretty big crowd. It's like super loud in there when we do play there. Um, Louisville has a good one in the ACC too. Yeah. Um, who else? Iowa, of course, you know. Oh my God, um, yeah. LSU, they have a pretty mm-hmm. good crowd. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they do. I feel like those are the top ones for sure. I didn't realize NC State traveled like that, though. I did not oh, yeah. know the pack was mm-hmm. like that. I feel like yeah. you know about LSU, Iowa. A big one for me is I see Gamecock Nation everywhere. <laughs> like, it does yeah. not matter where you are. I see South mm-hmm. Carolina fans. And then my last one around this is we talked a little bit about different guards in the ACC and how stacked it is, including yourself. Who do you feel like is your toughest guard or is kind of like that big guard that's circled on you on every scouting report every time you play them? It was Haley Van Lith. She mm-hmm. was she was that dog at Louisville, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Um it's Hannah now, of course. Like she's she's just a dog on defense and offense. Like she can play both ends of the floor. Um I when we played Notre Dame, I I was like preparing for, that was the most focused I've ever been in a game. <laughs> like I was like I had to go get training before that game. Like it was, it was serious. It was serious. Um, but yeah, she's such an amazing player. Um, so I feel like yeah, Hannah's Hannah's the big dog. She's a big dog. Talking about giving people their flowers, we gave Hannah a whole bunch, Georgia. But I feel like one person that kind of goes under the radar for a lot of people is Miss Fair from Syracuse. Like yes, for yeah. her, oh my God. For her to be doing what she's doing, and I feel like she doesn't get enough love in the media as well. Like I think she's Mm-mm. fourth on the all-time scoring list right now, and you yeah. don't you don't see that hype. And I remember 
I played her my freshman year and she was at Buffalo. She gave us buckets, like a 30 ball. Like what? <laughs> like there was we threw six different people at her and there was still she was still gonna go get hers. So what is it like scouting her and then actually it's one thing to scout somebody, but actually executing that when playing somebody of her caliber, talk to me about her. Um, the first time we played them at their house, like she was on fire. I feel like that was when she first hit like three K points. And yeah. we had like three, four different people on her. And it was crazy. She was shooting from the coach's box. I was like, yo, this is crazy. <laughs> it was like, you couldn't do nothing about it. Like, yeah. it is, it's like you try to ice her, you try to drop on her. Like, it's just so many different defenses. And she's an amazing shooter. All you can do is really just try to turn her into a driver, um, make her put the ball on the floor. Um, and I feel like that's what we did the second time around, which um, in the ACC tournament, um, she only had like two threes and we were just like, whew, thank God. <laughs> thank yeah. God. That's a win. That's a win, yeah, honestly. That's a, yeah, yeah. And then my other one who I feel like doesn't get a lot of love, but every time I watch NC State, I'm always really impressed with Isaiah James. I feel yeah. like she's kind of that X factor with NC State. You think about, you know, you have Sinai Rivers, you have River, River, you have Madison, all these different pieces. But mm -hmm. I feel like she really holds them down and is a spark mm -hmm. for them when she gets hot. So what mm -hmm. do you think she brings to NC State? Yeah, Zaya, that's my dog. Um, she's a she's a killer. I was surprised that she didn't play as much last year. Um, yeah. Because last year we beat NC State at home. But when she came in the game, it was like a whole different momentum. So mm -hmm. I'm just happy to see that she's out there killing it like how she is now. Um, I really wish she was playing with me. But... <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, she, she, she's such an amazing player, um, even better person off the court. I love that. So we're going to jump into you and your basketball journey. Let's take it back a little bit. Miami, Florida. Your dad was in the military, so you kind of jumped around a lot. Texas, Missouri, Hawaii, Atlanta, Miami. How did you start getting into basketball? Who put the ball in your hands? Honestly, my cousins did. Um, they played overseas, and I just grew up watching them. And um, ever since, like, I was three years old, I just always wanted to play basketball. Um, but I didn't start taking it serious until, like, seventh grade. That's when I was like, okay, I want to start playing basketball for real, for real. Um, before that, I was just thinking of everything. I was raised in Missouri, so, you know, I was raised around a lot of white kids. And, you know, I just wanted to, you know, try to follow in their footsteps. I wanted to be a marine biologist at one point before like taking basketball serious. Like I was a nerd. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, you know what, once I moved to Hawaii, um, I started taking it more serious. My dad was like, nah, you need to really start like, you know, training and taking this serious. So that's what I did. And ever since then, the rest is history. Wow. I love that. Oh, wow. I mean, I bet growing up in Hawaii was so much fun. I'm actually very jealous oh, of that. Yeah. I bet that was a blast. <laughs> yeah. So growing up, you started to take it seriously around seventh grade. Was there somebody that you really modeled your game after? Somebody that you looked up to? Maya Moore, for sure. Mm -hmm. I love Maya Moore. Like, she was an amazing player. It sucked when she retired. But, yeah, um, <laughs> the, uh, her and um, I would say LeBron James. I just like how powerful he plays. Like, he just plays yeah. like he's just like, you know, a king for real. Yeah. So I try to model that. Like, I try to, but... Now, I get a lot of comparison of like Baby Flash, like uh, Dwayne Wade. Mm -hmm. So now I just watch a lot of him, like young Dwayne Wade for sure. So those are those are three good picks, honestly. You name some heavy mm -hmm. hitters. I can I can see all three of them though. I feel like yeah. the way, even though you may not be the biggest guard out there, the way that you get to the rim, like you're bullying people down there. There's no <laughs> getting in front of you, which is really impressive. But so talk to me a little bit about your recruiting process, moving from state to state, kind of all around the country. Did that have an impact in the way you got recruited? Maybe, you know, jumping around AAU teams, different schools, mm -hmm. things like that. How did that impact your recruiting? Well, I didn't start like getting recruited for real, for real until like I moved to Atlanta. Um, mm -hmm. That's when I started playing with FBC in um, like 10th grade. That's when I started getting my offers and stuff like that. But people knew me from Hawaii. They just didn't know how to contact me. Um, so, uh, that was when I started really getting like more offers. My first offer was probably, I think it was Georgia and then Florida state had came after that. And then the, after Florida state, everybody just started rolling in. Mm -hmm. What ended up being that deciding factor for you to choose Florida state? Cause I feel like Florida state is like historically this legendary program, but kind of before you got there, they'd been under the radar for a few years. They hadn't been performing as people wanted them to. So what made you want to go to Florida state? 
it was somewhere that I knew I could make a name for myself. And I feel like I could have went anywhere and made a name for myself for yeah. sure. But they were just um, the most consistent. Um, I love the staff. The girls treated me like I was their little sister when I went on my official visit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just had a great time. Um, I remember going with Raven and Snoop uh, up there for an unofficial. And I didn't mm-hmm. have an offer. But I, those two, they did have an offer. And I was just up there like a little kid. That was the first <laughs> college I've ever been to. Mm-hmm. So I was just happy to be there. And then by the end of that, I got the offer. Um, so I was just like, you know what? This is definitely like from then on, I was like, yeah, this is going to be a top five school for me. Yeah. And then it's hard because then your head coach, Sue, retired in 2022. So then when Coach Brooke ended up taking over, what was that decision-making process for you to decide to stay? Because I feel like a lot of people reopen up their recruiting, think about leaving, all these different things. So what was it about Coach Brooke that made you decide that you wanted to stay? Yeah, it was definitely hard hearing Coach Sue um, retire because she's such an amazing woman. Um, But uh, Coach Brooke, she was the associate head coach at the time, and she recruited me like heavily. Um, we talked all the time. Um, we talked about boys, school, everything. <laughs> so she was like, um, she was one of the only coaches that I actually had a connection with. So I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna stick it through and um, see where it go- where it takes me. And um, it's one of the best decisions I've ever made. Throwing it back to your freshman year, you showed up and showed out. You were the first ACC freshman to ever lead the leading scoring at 21.3. Single season freshman scoring record, which is insane. You just did so much. You really carried Florida State as a freshman, which I feel like is really hard to do. Coming to league, you're figuring out college. There's a lot of different factors that are now impacting you. But, you know, coming into your freshman year, we talked about that underrated piece. Do you feel like you had something to prove? Yeah, of course. I knew my capabilities. I knew like coming into college. Well, at first, my summer, my first summer in college, it was pretty rough. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to (laughs) start. These practices are crazy. My defense, I don't even know what help defense is. Like, Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. I was just like, yeah, I was just a deer in headlights and I was just stressing so bad. But again, going back to that connection with Coach Brooke, um, she just told me to take it one day at a time. And um, I feel like that would really help me and gain back my confidence and, you know, um, just that hunger to, you know, go out there and prove myself. Um, and then ever since then, I just ran with it. Yeah, well, I feel like what's so interesting with that underrated aspect of you is like within the women's basketball community and basketball community in general, everybody knows how much of a bucket you are, right? Like we've talked yeah. about you many times on this podcast without you even being on here or anything like that. <laughs> You're brought up consistently. And so I think like within the basketball community, there's no sense of underrated. Like you are elite. But I feel like mm-hmm. we talked about earlier with, um, you know, all these different players, like the media isn't giving that recognition that you deserve. And so mm-hmm. Even coming from yourself, talking about, you know, freshman summer is very humbling. I was humbled Mm -hmm. as well. Like, it's, you got to learn a lot. It's schemes. It's help side. It's not everything runs through you. And so Mm -hmm. when did you start feeling like I could really dominate night in and night out in a top league like the ACC? It wasn't until, like, we had, like, it was right before the season. Um, We had... A scrimmage against our practice guys like we had a real scrimmage refs and everything um that was just to get us prepared for the season and we had a real game and um my coach put me in the starting lineup for that and I was like oh okay well and then like after that I just like um I think I scored like 27 against Mm -hmm. the boys and that was like my breakout moment um especially like just in practice like okay I feel like myself again um and yeah, like since then, I just was like, you know what, I can. If I can do this against these boys, I can do it against these girls. So mm-hmm. um, just getting back to me and being confident, that was like, that was that moment for me. Yeah. I mean, I feel like confidence can really change anything. Like whether the, mm-hmm. the ability is always going to be there, but it's the way that you view yourself really. So mm-hmm. you were kind of put into what seemed like a leadership position pretty early, leading your team in scoring, leading the league in scoring. So how hard was that as a freshman to come in and like lead the team and you're 17, 18 leading these 22 year olds. Like it's a, it's a weird dynamic to have. It was very hard. Um, I, I, I always feel guilty for the success that I do have. Well, I did. Mm-hmm. Um, I just felt bad. Cause I'm like, dang, or like these, like, you know, 
fifth year seniors and they haven't even scored a thousand points. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. You're out here already getting like, there. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So I never wanted to really just, it was just hard just to be myself fully. Um, last year, I felt like, especially with like, you know, some of the older girls that we had, um, they loved me, of course. They supported me. Um, but I always felt bad for what I like, you know, achieved because I just was like, I don't want to step on anybody's toes. I don't want to, you know, do too much. But at the same time, like, I got to go get mine. You know what I mean? And, and at the end of the day, I, I always did anything that it took to, you know, for my teammates um, to be successful and for us to win and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I just had to stop feeling guilty and um, just continue to be me because I know the person that I am. And, um Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's also like once you put your own egos aside and the whole team goal of winning is at the front, that's all that matters. It's whoever's going to get us there is going to be worth that. So um, talking a little bit, the end of your freshman season, your season's cut short with an injury. And y- y- y'all were peaking at that time, which is so tough. I feel that. I had the same thing happen. And so... Take me back to that moment when you found out you weren't going to be able to play in the postseason. You still earned Rookie of the Year, first team all ACC, but how were you able to handle being sidelined with an injury right before the conference NCAA tournament? Because it's hard, and it's hard to stay engaged, and, you know, you're already having this amazing season, so, like, you want to do more, as I know you did. So, like, how were you able to deal with that? Yeah, it was tough at first. I was like, dang, like, ugh. right before the tournament, I feel yeah. like, that was going to be my moment to just like, you know, show the world like who I really am uh, mm-hmm. around that time. But I feel like everything happens for a reason. Um, I trust God. And um, like I said, I just felt like it happened for a reason. And I I was blessed. It was a blessing and a curse at the same time because I got to, you know, um, see see things from a different perspective. I felt like, you know, sitting on the bench, it taught me a lot um, about how to be a good teammate, how to celebrate others, even when I'm not out there. Um, and I feel like that was a a learning curve for me for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, it didn't seem to, to impact the mindset that bad because your first game back, come back 20 ball upset over Tennessee. Um, you picked up right where you left off. So I feel like that's amazing to see, especially for somebody so young to come back and just get right back into the flow of things. So what was that recovery process for you? Like heading into your sophomore season, working on that off season, not only like focusing on knee rehab, but it's also the mental aspect of trusting yourself again, getting back into playing shape. It's very difficult. Yeah. Um, that summer after like my injury and stuff, I had to go to USA and I was exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. But it it really just prepared me for the season. I felt like, um, yeah, it was hard. It was very, like my, that, like this summer was probably like this past summer was probably the hardest summer I've ever had. Just mentally, just like, there's so much pressure. I have to continue to grow my game and I know how I have to, I, I want to be consistent. I want to, um, like I said, just continue to grow. So um, all the pressure, all the, the the media, my family and stuff like that, it really became a lot at one point. But I felt like um, once once non-conference was over this year, I felt like I was back into my groove um, coming into ACC play. So, yeah, I felt back in shape and I felt ready to go. And I want you to talk a little bit about kind of your big three that you guys have at Florida State. Because the three of y'all mm-hmm. be going crazy with you, mm-hmm. OMG, and Michaela. When you guys are healthy, yeah. it's unstoppable. Then you also take into account Sarah, your point guard. I feel like mm-hmm. all y'all together, it's quite a core to have. And so was there a certain game this season with all four of you guys hitting that really made you feel like you guys could contend in the tournament this year and make a deep run? Yeah, um, Virginia Tech. Like we played, we played great against Virginia Tech. I felt like we all, like we all did what we had to do. Um, and at, uh, since that game, we just came together and we were like, we're the core. We have to, you know, we have to set the tone, even for the players on the bench, the freshmen, everybody. Um, so um, that's what we ran with the whole season, just the core, us four. Um, mm-hmm. You know, going out there, just doing the best that we could. Okay, amazing. You knew Virginia Tech quick. I remember watching that game, y'all. Y'all were clicking. It was very apparent. Yeah. And when you guys are clicking, it's scary. And so, you know, coming off a tough loss in the ACC tournament, now we're getting into March Madness. It's really big tournament time. What's not only your mindset, but kind of the vibe of the locker room thinking about what goals you guys have moving into this postseason? 
I feel like nobody expected us to go to the semifinals in the ACC tournament mm-hmm. anyways. <laughs> um, so I felt like that was just, that was just motivation. Just yeah. it's for, um, for us to just bring into uh, NCAAs. I feel like, like you said, when we're clicking, we probably played the best, our best two games in the tournament, honestly. <laughs> yeah. um, we played really good. And um, that's, it just gave us a taste of, you know, what we're capable of and how far we can actually go. Yeah. We, we care about each other. We want to win. Um, and I feel like everybody's on the same page and it's a great time to be on the same page. I feel like, um, so yeah, I just hope that we can go pretty far. Before we wrap up, we get into the vibe check, which is going to be rapid fire questions, which I feel you're going to be great at because we've had a few rapid fire already with you knew VT, you knew all these different things. So we're ready. Starting off pretty easy. What's the drill that you never want to see on your practice plan? It's so many drills I don't like to see, but uh, <laughs> probably the foster advantage. I don't like that drill. What is that? Like, it's like when you have the free throw and it's like um, two people and it's like one on two, then oh. two on three, and then like, yeah. Yeah, if you're, if you're the one, if you start as yeah. the one, you're gassed. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that drill yeah. does suck. Okay. Yeah. Game winning shot or game winning steal? Game winning shot. Okay. And one or three pointer? And one. Group TikTok or solo TikTok? Group. Group, okay. Why double zero for your jersey number? Um, In Hawaii, I got that number. Um, my coach was like, my AU coach was like, oh, you put like James Bond, like double zero, double oh seven. So I just kept it and I ran with it. So. Oh, that's good. James Bond is nice. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I've never heard that in a basketball term, but I like yeah. it. I like it. Yeah. Biggest trash talker. This could be anybody or somebody on your team. Sarah Bajetti. Really? <laughs> My teammate, yeah. We'd be having to calm her down. Really? I feel like I've seen this. Like, they always, like, will run a back quick highlight of her. You just see her mouth yapping. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I can see that. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's your biggest basketball ick? Ooh, charges. I hate I hate people that take charges on me. Really? I hate it. Okay. Yes. And now, like, with the new rule, you can take a charge anywhere. And I yeah, hate that's true. Okay. Who's the biggest flopper? Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> biggest flopper. I don't want to put my teammate down like that, but Sarah, Sarah Bajetti. Really? Oh, we not her it. again. We love it. Yeah. We love it, though. We need it. We she need be bringing it. all the emotion. She she is an actress. Yes. I love that. Honestly, you, you need somebody like that to get you some calls. You mm-hmm. Every now and then you need mm-hmm. it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody you would want to play two-on-two with, but it can't be one of your own teammates. Raven Johnson. Okay, I love that. Y'all gonna be a little small, but I believe in you. The two yes. I believe. Okay. Okay. What's your best impersonation of Coach Brooke? T. You have to get back on defense. Oh my God. The voice is yeah. crazy. If she listens to this, you're gonna get in trouble and I will she not be to blame. Knows. She, she already, already know. Knows. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna be listening out for that. I need her to be mic'd up so I can hear that voice specifically. Okay, that's good. But Tanaya, thank you so much for coming on. This has been such a pleasure to get to catch up with you. Thank you so much. I I really am so proud of you and the growth that you've had. And this is podcast. I really love this podcast. Um, So thank you for having me. Oh my God, stop. I'm going to start blushing on here. And you know, always go you, slightly go Seminoles, but not too much. None of the, none of the arm stuff. I'm not doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But Thank you so much to everyone for listening. Stay tuned for another episode of Sometimes I Hoop. We'll be back next week.